Okay, so one Saturday afternoon, about 17 years ago, we were driving to the DIY shop and the supermarket in South London again. And I looked at my wife and I said, you know what, why don't we go and live in France? Um, we'd seen a programme earlier in the year about a British family who started a fishing business in Normandy or Brittany, I think. And that sparked something in me. Uh, at the time, I was out of the country with work at least half the month. And my wife was quite often also away, working strange hours at photo shoots. We basically hardly saw each other. And the weekends were spent doing the kind of life chores that everyone has to get through. Food and DIY and not looking forward to Monday and generally being stressed. So we discussed it at some length and worked out the numbers and decided to go for it. So fast forward about a year and there we were on a grey September's day, homeless. Standing by the port in Dover with a car packed to the gunnels with all the belongings we had that weren't in storage, all ready to begin our big French adventure. There was me, my wife and a retired greyhound on the back seat. And so we began our journey to France. After a lot of research, mainly on prices based on what we thought we could afford, we'd settled for an area of France called the Limousin. It's not an especially well-known area. Until relatively recently, the transport links weren't that good. They're much, much better now. The French refer to it as La France Profonde, meaning it's an almost old-fashioned area, um, well away from the influence of Paris and the big cities. There were a number of reasons we decided on this area, other than price that I'll, uh, I'll go into a little bit later on. In total, it was about an eight-hour drive, as we'd made the um, very wise decision to not go around the outside of Paris. Other journeys showed later on that this was a good plan. So we stopped about halfway and stayed the night in Chartres, about halfway between the Limousin and the Channel ports. Chartres was really a very beautiful town. Uh, most famous for its 12th century cathedral, but also has this amazing light festival every night from April to October, which is definitely, definitely worth seeing. That's every night when there isn't a global pandemic, of course. Um, so the next day, we continue our journey. And as we left central France and came into the Limousin, the landscape completely changed. We immediately knew that this is where we wanted to be. Uh, a lot of central France is quite flat and dull, to be honest, but it's when you get into the Limousin, it becomes rolling hills and forests. Uh, it's known as the French Lake District because there are hundreds and hundreds of lakes. Lots of hills and forests, very low density population, super clean air, quiet. And, you know, after living in South London for 20 years, it really is a, a fantastic place to live. So we pulled into the little cottage where we'd arranged a six month rental, which in theory was going to give us time to find and buy and move into a house. Uh, as it was September, we were able to get a reasonable deal on the cottage as the owners were happy to have some out of season rental. That's the useful, uh, useful little tip that. Um, I said earlier that there were other reasons why we chose this area to live. Uh, I guess it might be useful to explain our thinking. France is a huge place with a massive diversity of property and culture and price. So narrowing down the area that you're looking in is, uh, is absolutely crucial. We basically drew a line across the whole of southern France, too expensive, and further south, way too hot and crowded in the summer. Uh, we did the same across northern France, as one of the reasons for moving was to get away from the endless grey skies in the UK, and the climate in Normandy and Brittany was a bit too similar to that in Britain. My wife's originally from Durban, so she ideally wanted to live near the coast. Uh, but once we looked at prices in the Charente and the Charente Maritime, that became unviable. And to be honest, a bit like the area of France south of Paris, it's quite flat. East of clermont ferrand got the chop because of price as well. Once you get anywhere near the ski resorts, prices start to climb. So this left us a rough kind of rectangle for us to look in. Um, we decided we also had to be within an hour of the airport, as the plan was at the time my wife to fly back to the UK now and again for photographic work, which really meant Limoges or Bergerac. Having talked to various people over the years and having been on cricket tours in the Dordogne, believe it or not, we knew that the Dordogne, or Dordogne shirt as it's quite often referred to, was a little bit too British. So that left us with a radius around Limoges airport to look at, and that was the area we concentrated our search. Initially we were going to buy a big house in the country with loads of land and perhaps do holiday rentals. Uh, once we started looking, we realised that the culture shock of moving from London to a remote field would, would just be too much. Uh, in France, the little hamlets away from the boulangerie buy their bread from the boulangerie van, which comes every day. One place we initially really liked was a 20 minute drive to the nearest place the boulangerie van visited. Uh, I know that degree of isolation is, is what some people crave, but I think there's no doubt my wife and I would have killed each other. 
So in the end, we bought a beaten up old house in a small town with a couple of restaurants, a supermarket, a doctor, two boulangeries. Uh, and that's how we ended up going from Crystal Palace in South London to Oradour Surveyor in South France. Um, I'll do a little video on how the house was when we bought, what we did to it, what it looks like now, as that may be interesting to some people. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and then you'll get to know when I've posted new content. Cheers.